Welcome to an overview of the Alcatel Lucent 8068 telephone. This video will get you an understanding of how this phone works in both our cloud and customer premise environments. We're going to take you through the physical phone layout first and then we'll jump into various features that are available. First off, we have a wideband audio phone, so this works as a great speaker phone within a small office or even a slightly larger um, uh, small conference room. The station also has a 3.5 millimeter jack. That 3.5 millimeter jack supports external headsets as well as external booster speakers that you may want to add to your phone for additional audio capability in a speaker mode. The handset itself on the 8068 happens to also have a Bluetooth option available. As you can see here, it charges on these teeth. And there is no hook flash on these phones. It actually uses an electronic hook flash, so you don't have to have a lifter kit for these phones. If you use a headset, you can actually plug it in and have it take the phone on and off hook electronically. If you were to purchase this phone with the optional Bluetooth handset, of course, there would not be a coil cord attached. This phone has an internal Bluetooth radio, so you can connect your Bluetooth headset to the phone directly. However, the other phones in the model line, if you choose to use a Bluetooth headset, you can simply purchase an external Bluetooth base station, connect it to the phone, and it will go ahead and function with your Bluetooth headset. The Alcatel Lucent phone system also has a unique feature, the QWERTY keyboard. The QWERTY keyboard allows for two different functions. The first is the ability to text message between phones and optionally to text message to smartphones and to browser-based applications that can be added to your installation. Texting is very simple. Simply go into your mail menu, press send text message, enter the name or the extension number, and begin either a new message or use a pre-programmed message. You can see we go ahead and type it, we press OK, and the text message is sent to the other user. The second feature available through the QWERTY keyboard is the dial by name directory. It can be programmed to either dial by first name or last name and simply begin typing. In our case, the system is designed around first name. And as we continue to add letters, the number of numbers available gets lessened and refined. We can use the navigational array to scroll through the numbers available to us. And of course, when we find the number we want, we simply press OK, and the call is generated. All of these features work with all of the phones in the line. That would be inclusive of the 803839 and the 802829 phone. To the right of the handset is your traditional dial pad, and then you have two additional buttons at the bottom. The first is your speakerphone or off hook button. The other is your on hook button. This is in place of using a hook flash. Next, we have our dynamic display. We'll take you through the display. However, the display itself shows up to 40 keys in its idle state. And as you can see, we can scroll through those keys using this navigational array. The navigational array also allows you to move from tab to tab within the system, and it also lets you select whatever you happen to have highlighted. As you can see, we get 10 display keys at a time, and I can scroll down to get through my 40. The C key is the back button, so anytime you move within the menu structure, if you need to get back one page, it'll take you back. If you continue to press it, it will go back to the main. These keys here function as your mute key. So if you are on your handset, then it will mute your handset. If you're in speaker mode, it will mute the external microphone. These two keys are your volume control. This also impacts your contrast of your screen should you want to lower or raise the brightness of the screen. Next is your speaker phone. This will place the phone in its speaker mode. And of course, when these features are activated, a lamp will show up. The next button is your hold key. This will place the active call on hold and allow you to come back to your main menu and either make another call, place an intercom call, or use other features. The transfer key 
while it will show up on the screen, it also is a dedicated key for those users that transfer frequently. Uh, this key will allow you to transfer to another extension or off-premise, or even to voicemail. Next is the redial key, and the redial key has two features available to it. If I do a quick press, the redial key will call the last number that was dialed. If I press and hold the redial key, it will give me the last eight calls. I can use the navigation array to get to the call I want to make, and then I simply press OK, and it will make the call. The next key is the info key. If I'm not sure what a key on the phone does, I simply navigate to the key, press the I button for info, and then press the key. Programming of terminal settings happens to be the function of this particular key. So if you ever get lost in the phone, don't necessarily know what a particular key does, the info key is handy. Finally, we have our mailbox key. When we activate the mailbox key, this actually is a notifications area. It gives us three different types of notifications. The first type of notification is new voicemails. The second type of notification is new text mails. And if I have missed a call, a third type of notification will show up in this screen, which is our missed call log. Let's go ahead and walk through the main tab. As you can see here, this is a pretty standard configuration for a two-line phone. We can have multiple lines that appear on this system, and you'll see as we go through the demonstration, the line keys actually give you more information about particular calls. So I have line one and line two, and then I also have an intercom call uh, key so that if I want to call another extension. Of course, if I go at the intercom and I dial nine, I will get an external dial tone, and it acts just like a line key at that point. The keys on the right-hand side are speed dial keys, and these have been designed in a couple of different ways. The Jeff O key is actually set to be a call coverage key, so I can see its status regardless of what I'm doing. So if that phone actually goes off hook to make a call, I will get information. The David C key is another extension within the system, and I can quickly dial or forward uh, calls to that number. The Tanya key happens to be a 10-digit external phone number, and we can show you how those function as well later on in the demonstration. Uh, the keys with the dots are blank and are available for programming. Let's go ahead and program a key. It's very straightforward. I can press and hold the key. If there's no information on the key, then it will automatically come up with the program capability, at which point if I want to program a name, I simply go to name, I can use the QWERTY keyboard to type in that name. And then I press OK. Then I can add the number. As you can see, the phone system is going to add a number, uh, digit 9. So it's going to assume that this is an external call. If I need it to be an intercom call, I can go ahead and erase that 9. So we'll go ahead and put in the extension number here, and 2231, and we'll click OK. So we have now created an intercom quick dial for user Thomas. We'll go ahead and click OK, and as you can see, that key immediately arrives. So it's easy to program a key on the phone system. If we want to delete that key, all we have to do is simply go into Settings, Keys, find that particular key. As you can see here, this phone actually has, the status has changed. It's actually off hook. We're going to go ahead and grab that key, and we're going to press clear. That has erased the name and the number, and we are okay with that. So it has accepted the change. And now when we go to the main set, you'll notice the key is back in its default state, unprogrammed. If I want to make an intercom call to another extension that I don't have a speed dial for, I simply press the ICM key, and then I can dial the digits. You can see here that at this point I can go ahead and send a text message, maybe Jeff doesn't answer. Or I can wait, and I've got an active call display, I can wait and it'll actually go to voicemail, at which point I can leave a message for Jeff. Of course, I can also directly press the speed dial, and it will go ahead and ring that phone automatically. 
The same is true for external numbers. If I have them in a speed dial bin, I can make that external call. It will present the caller ID name. And of course I can toggle between the name and the number simply by pressing the info key. This also works on inbound calls. Let's go ahead and look at how an inbound call is handled. When a call is generated, you're going to be presented with the caller ID name if provided. You can toggle to the caller ID number if you'd like simply by pressing the info key. Simply go off hook and you are in conversation. As you can see, we have multiple features now available to us. We have hold, conference, record, and transfer. If your system has a record license, simply press the record key and you will be prompted with the recording feature. We can stop, we can pause, we can continue to record. We're going to stop the recording and we go back to the conversation screen. Now, that audio is placed in our voicemail box. So let's take a look at some features that we can activate while we are on an active call. So as a call comes in, we're presented with caller ID information and we go ahead and answer the call. At which point we can now place that call on hold, conference, or transfer. Perhaps we want to just put the call on hold. When we press the hold key, you'll notice that the key for the call is actually on hold. We have the little pause indicator and that we're actively engaged in a call which is this status right here. So other people who maybe have a key to see what our phone status is, they're going to see that we're off hook and we're actively engaged. Perhaps I'd like to make a second call. I simply press the speed dial or start dialing the number like I would on any other phone and that call is generated. Once that call is generated, you can see I now have two calls available to me. I'm speaking to Tanya and I have that other call on hold. If at any time I want to toggle between the two calls, it's as simple as pressing the button right next to that particular uh, phone. Here you go. I've toggled back to that icon cloud conversation and the Tanya call has been placed on hold. As you can see, I also have a timer active within my call. So I'll go back to Tanya and this is called call brokering. I can talk between two users, two, in, two different individuals and relay information back and forth. When I hang up, whatever call happened to be on hold rings back to me. As you can see, here's that active call and all I have to do is go off hook and I take the call. So I never have the risk of hanging up on a call that's on hold. It will always ring back to me. Once that external party hangs up or I hang up, the call is released and I'm put back into my static state. Let's go ahead and take a look at the conference feature on this phone. Either I make a call or a call comes into me, at which point I'm on an active call and I'd like to conference a third party in. I simply press the conference key. The first call is placed on hold. The second line here shows that I have an active line and instead of dialing 10 digits, I'm actually going to go to my speed dial. But you could at this point dial 4 digits, dial 10 digits. I'm going to go ahead and speed dial an external number and once that call is connected, you'll notice that the conference feature now blinks, meaning that I have two calls available. One is on hold, the second is active. When I press the conference feature a second time, all three parties are connected. I can toggle back and forth between the two, but it doesn't really change any of the feature set. That's just so I know who's on the call. If I hang up, it hangs up on both parties. So let's go ahead and look at the transfer feature. Either I make an external call or I have a call come in or I'm talking to somebody on the intercom. When that call comes in and I'm active on the call, I now have the transfer feature available to me at which point I can go ahead and select transfer. I can manually dial the internal or external number. I can use my redial list or I can go to my personal speed dial. I'm going to use my personal speed dial. I'm going to call that external number that I have there. As you can see, the first call is on hold. 
and now that second call is active, I'm in conversation, and my transfer key is now blinking, indicating that I can transfer the call. I'll go ahead and transfer that key call, and off it goes. And then I'm presented with dial tone because I'm off hook. Now the great thing about pressing the transfer feature twice is that the first time I press transfer, I then engage in the call, and then I can give that outside party a warning or conversation information about who's about to be transferred through. Once I press the transfer key a second time, the call goes through and those two parties are connected and I'm out of the loop. One of the features that this phone system has is a feature called callback request. As you can see here, Jeff Allier is actually on the phone. So if I want to call Jeff, you're going to see that it says please wait. And I actually have a new feature available to me called callback. When I press that, it has booked a callback request. When Jeff hangs up, when his phone and my phone are both in the idle state, it will start a speakerphone and dial Jeff's phone to connect the two phones together. Let's take a look at forwarding. Forwarding is pretty straightforward. Up at the top, I have the forwarding icon. When I press the key next to it, I have several forwarding options available to me. I can immediately forward to another extension. I can immediately forward to my voicemail, which is the feature most of us use. I can put my phone into Do Not Disturb, which doesn't necessarily have to go to my voicemail. And of course, I can cancel forwarding. We'll take a look here at the immediate forward to voicemail. You can see that forwarding is accepted. You'll notice that the icon now is animated, showing that my phone is forwarded. And then I will get a text bar across the top of the display to also tell me what the forwarding is that I have activated. If I want to turn forwarding off on my phone, I simply press the button next to the forward icon, cancel forwarding. And now my phone will ring as required. Let's check the voicemail feature. When I press the mailbox, when I first get my phone, it will actually walk me through setting up and recording my name as well as my password. When I go into the mailbox, you can see that I have voicemails and text mails. If I want to check those messages, I will be presented, if they're new, with text messages or voice messages. If I have voice messages that are unread, I can also access them here. As you can see, I've got recorded conversations, old messages, new messages. So if I want to listen to the recorded conversation, I have that there. If I want to just listen to messages, and if I had more than one, I would simply have a list, at which point I could navigate and play the message that I want. If this is the message I want to listen to, I press OK, at which point I get the caller ID information and then I can play. I can send a copy of this to someone else, I can erase it, or I can call them back. Same features exist within the text messaging, and if I see missed calls in this list, I can call them back from this display as well. The Info tab simply displays how many messages, my extension, and my name. It also shows, in this case, that I have a callback active, meaning that I have requested for a phone when it becomes available to call me back. The Menu tab allows me to change the settings of my phone, as well as other advanced features. However, most of the time, you'll simply use the settings, followed by the set, followed by ringing, contrast, Bluetooth activation, headset jack, and forcing calls to ring my headset. So instead of ringing my handset, they immediately get picked up by my headset. If I wanted to change my ringing, simply press ringing. I can change the level. I can make it progressive, meaning it starts quiet and goes loud. I can make beeps. Or, of course, there are multiple tunes available. And I can listen to them and select the one I'd like. 